Alright, let's see here. Do we have everything on? Yes. Got the audio on over here. Alright. Everything is going. Yes, yes, yes. Um, do we need to adjust the microphones here? Alright. Up there. Um, Alright, here we go. Um, oh yeah, check the hair. Don't forget the hair. Very important. It's called cowlick. So I don't know why it's called cowlick. It's kind of a weird thing. Okay. All right. How to make a tutorial using just your iPhone from beginning to end, from getting the phone set up to posting it for your students. Here we go. That's better. And I'll show you a few tricks along the way. Hi, my name is Clay and welcome to the channel here. So we're going to talk about how to make a tutorial with your phone, with just your phone uh, using that. Now I do have a few things like the stand here. You can see where the phone is propped up and I like to use a ring light uh, to make it look a little nicer. And of course I have my microphones here that I'm speaking into recording into my Zoom. And I'll, I'll link all these things down in the description if you're interested in any of them. But they are of course all optional. All right, you know, the audio on phones has gotten so good, and of course the video has gotten so good, that you can make a great tutorial with just your phone. I'm going to show you a few tricks along the way if you do want to try to improve the quality. But remember, the most important thing is your knowledge. You're trying to create a resource for your students to put online so they can watch whenever they need. And so that really is the most important thing. You don't have to worry about production value or, or any of that, but we do like to do nice things for our students. We do want to make it quality enough that they'll want to watch it and watch it over and over again. So I do understand. So that's what this is about. So you can do as much or as little of this as you want. Now, the first thing I did was, of course, straighten myself out over there. Uh, so let me show you how I did that. And we're going to talk about a couple of other things while I'm over there uh, at the phone. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you what I use to uh, straighten myself out here. And I'm going to use my iPad uh, camera here to help us out. So remember that the phone has on it a level. You just go over here to the measure app. And you can see, all right, it actually glows green and goes yellow. There we go. There's the green. Okay. When it is level. You can see that here from the other side. Okay. And just turn my little tripod here to get it level. Remember, this is all optional, but little things you can do to make it make the quality a little bit better. Remember, the students will hopefully watch it longer if it's a little bit higher quality. Okay. Now also, you know, I like to use the rear camera here because it's the nicer camera. But of course, you don't have to do that. You can flip this around and use what Apple calls the uh, eyesight camera. And in which case you'd probably want to flip this whole tripod around like this. Okay. All right. I'm going to get my self leveled there. Okay. And then I'm going to get back to the camera, and video, and flip myself around there. Voila. Okay. Obviously, for getting set up, making sure you're straight in the camera, that everything is in the shot that you want to be in the shot, obviously this is going to be very easy, right? Okay. The easiest. This is a iPhone 12 Pro. You can even change the quality. You can shoot 4K, 24 frames per second, or 4K, or whatever you want, even from the front camera, from the eyesight camera, which is really nice. Okay. Now, for editing and uploading, 720 is the best. Okay. It's the easiest because it's going to make the smallest file size. Um, on this channel, remember, I have some, a uh, couple of videos, you know, how to make a great video using what you have already. Uh, even if you don't have a tripod, if you don't have any kind of lighting, 
how can you get a, a better video quality using just what you have in your house already. So be, be sure and check that out. The reason that I like to shoot in 4K is the following. I shoot it in 4K and then I edit in 1080. And that allows me to zoom in and have nice You know, the front eyesight camera here, hi, is the easiest way to make sure that you're set up in the picture and that everything is in the picture that you want. All right, but I'm going to show you one other trick that you can use uh, to make sure, or a couple of other tricks that you can use to make sure that you're in the frame the way that you want to be. Now, let me also, uh, while well, I have them, I'm going to flip this back around here. The other thing you can do is to use your watch to see yourself, okay, if you have a watch, I'm gonna assume that everybody doesn't, but just a little tip here, if you do, um, you can actually use the camera remote, it looks like this here, all right, this little button right here, the camera, click on the camera, okay, it will connect to your phone, and you'll be able to see yourself, and you can even see the little yellow box, the little focus box, where it will focus, okay, change there for you, using your watch, okay? So you can use without even going back and forth and taking a test shot, uh, which is another way to make sure you've got everything in there. If you wanna use the better camera, uh, is just to use your watch and you can see yourself enough to know that you've got everything in there that you want in there. Last thing here that I will, hi, uh, share with you about setting up the camera is uh, the lighting. You know, I like to use the ring light uh, to make it look a little nicer. But remember, you have, especially if you have a newer phone like this, you have access to be able to, oops, let me get it pointed there. When you touch the screen, you can darken and brighten the picture. Let me show you over here. It will go from brighter. You can get it darker, just like this. See that? All right, if you want to make it look a little nicer here, okay, here, let me show you on the screen record. Going up, and I'm just dragging my finger here. All right, you can see from the iPad there. And I'll show you over here, because it works the same on iPhone and iPad, depending on what you're doing. I just drag this here. See, can make it, oh, it's kind of washed out there. And I just drag, I get the, the the lock there to come on okay and I can adjust the brightness again totally optional remember your knowledge <laughs> is what your students need so these are all just little things you can do to improve it um, but it, you don't have to do any of them okay Now, with the audio, for this tutorial for you all, I'm using my uh, SE microphones going into my Zoom here, as you can see, somewhere <laughs> there, okay? Uh, but remember, the phones have built-in audio. Uh, depending, you know, people have varying opinions about the audio from the phone. Some people think it's really bad. Some people think it's really great. Some people are in the middle. You know, remember, I, I keep saying, it's all about just getting this resource to your students. And so I think the audio is just fine for making a good tutorial. If you want to try to add audio to it, you can still do that inside iMovie. You can still use your iPhone if you have something else you want to record audio with. Like if you have an iPad um, and you want to get the audio from that or get the audio from the phone, you know, and vice versa. But for this tutorial, I'm using just the onboard mic uh, for the tutorial that I'm about to record. Now, if you want to see the finished product, it's going to be a tutorial just on uh, when to change strings. So if that's a resource you need, if you're a string teacher, uh, you can go see the final product. Or if you just want to see what the quality is like to see what we did here uh, in the tutorial, head over to my cello channel, the cello online, um, and see uh, that tutorial, which I'm going to make with just uh, the phone using iMovie. All right, uh, here we go. Okay, so we got that done. Yay. All right. And 
Um, one note about the audio that I ended up doing here when I recorded the tutorial just now was that I actually scooted closer. Okay, so when you're setting up, if, you know, however close you can get to the microphone uh, and still get everything in there that you want. I was able to scoot up here, I'll show you, like this here, okay, and still have my nice background and all of that. And I think it's going to sound a little bit better. Remember, audio, the closer you can get to the microphones, okay, uh, the better the audio quality is going to be. It doesn't matter what kind of mic you use. If you have a thousand dollar mic, if you're too far away, it's going to sound terrible. If you have just the onboard mic of the phone and you can get really close, okay, if you don't need to show your instrument, um, if you don't need to show anything with your hands, if you're just explaining something, you know, about the strings, I probably could have gotten even closer there um, on, the, uh, on the video. But anyway, uh, get as close as you can, that will improve the audio. And there's no audio gains or anything to set. It's one of the things that makes the phone so great is that they do all that for you automatically. All right, so let's go edit the video. All right, here we go. <laughs> so let's edit the tutorial that we just made. I'm going to show you completely on the iPhone, and I'm using iPhone 12 Pro here. Oh, and by the way, I'm recording this uh, screen here with the uh, iPad, uh, the M1 iPad Pro, and over here on the Canon M50 here, so you can have a view of what we're doing. I also want to mention that I've hooked up a Bluetooth wireless mouse, uh, magic mouse here, to the phone, which you can do, and also a keyboard. You can't do everything in iMovie on your phone uh, with these, but it certainly helps. And I have here the, the Joby, uh, my Gorillapod here to prop it up uh, because craning over, you know, the phone and with your fingers uh, can get uh, tiresome. You know, keyboard, mouse, Joby pod, uh, these are all optional. You can do it you know, with your hands on the phone. Uh, but if you think you might be doing this a lot, um, this is a spare mouse and a spare keyboard we had laying around. So uh, I have it hooked up to the phone. If you're interested, in a, if you guys are interested in a tutorial about how to hook up a mouse and a keyboard to your phone, let me know and I can put that on the channel here. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, one last thing. So, you know, you're filming all these tutorials. Um, you're, you're making multiple things for your students, uh, just like how I was making multiple things on my phone here. Before you get into the editing process, go through and organize them. And I've already done that part. I went through and took all the videos and just put them in albums. So if you're doing everything on your iPhone using iMovie, everything's going to be local, you know, on your device, right? You're going to be using photos. You're going to be using albums. So Stay organized, go through. I did it while I was at the gym on the treadmill. Go through, make albums, uh, title them whatever the tutorial is. So you can put all your takes in there and organize it that way so that when you go back into iMovie, it's really easy to find those clips that you want and put them in the project. But we're going to go step by step here, but just know that I already did that step. Okay, so I also have the mouse here so that you guys can see what I'm doing on the screen. All right, so I'm going to go into iMovie here, and I'm going to click this plus sign. I'm going to click Create Movie. And this first one now, as I said, you know, you can't do everything here. And let's go back over here to Media, Albums. And while this is pulling up, when you first open this up, if you use iCloud like I do, because I was noticing earlier, as I was getting ready to make this for you guys, and it's going to show you every single album in iCloud. I remember this uh, tutorial that we're making is, when is it time to change your strings? Okay. I noticed earlier when I went into this that I was clicking on stuff, and yeah, like right now, like it's not giving me <laughs> the yellow square. And I think that's because it's downloading from iCloud. Yeah it was not giving it to me and then it was giving it to me um, so let's see here let's just give it a second waiting waiting drink some coffee we're gonna see if it's actually downloading from um, 
iCloud or if it's just stuck. Maybe it just gets stuck. How about if I create the movie? I can go ahead and create the movie and then hit this plus sign and then click albums. Maybe it's an iMovie glitch here. I'm gonna scroll down. Something to be aware of here. When is it time to change your strings? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, but it's not gonna let me select all of them at once here. All right. If I click on video, and then click on when is it time to change your string so yeah then for whatever reason I get a different menu aha so then I get the plus sign okay it's gonna let me add that one all right and then oh then it went back to that one automatically yeah and I add all of these takes in here All right, so go through the video menu. That's the way to do it. If you go to albums, it doesn't work. Okay. And here we are. All right. We're going to start here. Usually the last take is the best take, of course. Um, but we're going to preview them here. And just to make sure, and like I said, you know, the mouse won't do everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pinching here with my fingers to zoom in on the timeline. Okay, and I have nine minutes of material here. All right, so let's just listen. All right, here we go. Take five or whatever it is. <laughs> Too many takes. Okay, let's get it done here. So when is it time to change the strings? When should I change my cello strings? This is a question I get asked quite often uh, because it can be difficult to know, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a student, if you haven't been playing for long, uh, or maybe if you, if you have been playing for a while, you still might be something that's on your mind. All right, so what are the three? <laughs> yeah. It's very quiet. I think it might be because of the screen record going there. All right, I'm going to show you how to split a clip here in iMovie. So you can trim that off. Yeah, you hold that down and it brings up the menu there. All right, so when I press down, I was pinching. What I was pinching and zooming here was this right here. All right, the actual clip. All right, to get it to go uh, to zoom in, meaning zoom in time wise. All right to make it longer or more detailed. All right, let me go in. So you see how the timeline itself is moving much faster, giving me more flexibility where I can edit. So when is it? So there's that first one that we know. You can see where you start talking, okay? So then if I just tap it, all right, which I can use my mouse here now, all right, I just tapped it with the mouse, and hit split, okay, and then I'm going to delete that section. So when is it time to change the strings? When should I change my cello strings? This is a question I get asked quite often uh, because it can be difficult to know, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a student, if you haven't been playing for long, uh, or maybe if you, if you have been playing for a while, you still might be something that's on your mind. Boy, long pause. Okay, uh, the mouse isn't going to let me drag. So let's go ahead and cut that out. Hold on. And if I detach the audio, now this is one advantage of the iPad. I believe it's on the iPad. It shows you the audio. You know, showing the audio wave um, can really help. Um. All right, so what are the three? Showing the audio waveform can really help you know where you are in the movie. It can, it's a huge help. Um, let's see here. So we're going to find this. Yeah, let's go ahead and split it there again. 
You know, we're going to take something out. All right. So, what are the three? <laughs> and there's, you know, me messing up as we all do. Okay. Um, in the video. All right. So there are three things, main things, that I would tell you about changing strings. Uh -huh. the but you can also visually see where you start talking again after the little mess up. All right, so there are three. All right, so we're going to split it there again. Okay, actually, I want to do something. I'm going to click undo. Yeah, because I, since, since I can't see the waveform anyway, I don't want to detach the audio because I don't want it to accidentally get moved. Okay, so now I'm going to split it and then delete this section here. Oops, I deleted something I didn't want to delete there. Hold on. I'm to change the string. So when is it time to change the strings? When should I change my cello strings? This is a question I get asked quite Spend often. Let's again here. Uh, because it can be difficult to know, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a student, if you haven't been playing for long. Uh, or maybe if you, if you have been playing. And I'm going to pause the screen record on the phone because I'm curious if it's causing the volume here to... Um... While it still might be something that's on your mind. Ah, yes. So while we're doing this here... Right, so, what are the three... <laughs> and there I messed up. Um, yeah, so the volume is for you is going to be much different uh, when you are, because you're not going to be screen recording while you're editing this, and you'll be able to hear it just fine. Um, I would suggest, and we're going to talk about that at the end, is going back and listening to it, make sure the volume is okay, and you can adjust the volume. Um, you know, the volume's all the way up on the phone. It's always hard to know exactly what it's going to sound like for everyone, especially since in iMovie we're a little bit limited. We can't see the waveform. So I would just listen to it um, on, you know, several things. You don't have to do this every time you make a tutorial. I would just do it at the beginning until you get used to it. And then once you do it a few times, then you'll you'll just know that the, the volume is fine. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of automatic uh, stuff on the phones, which is why they're so great to use. Uh, all right, so let's get back to it here. Something that's on your mind. You still might be something that's on your mind for a while. You often, uh, because it can be difficult to know, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a student, if you haven't been playing for long, uh, or maybe if you, if you have been playing for a while, you still might be something that's on your mind. There's that big pause. Get rid of that. How do I find it? If you have been playing for a while, you still might be something that's on your mind. All right, so let's just cut that out so we can get to the point here. All right, so what are the three? <laughs> oh, little, 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 little. All right, right, so there. All right, and then we're going to split, get that. Delete, okay, and then you can see where it's going to cut right to it. Might be something that's on your mind. All right, so there are three. Oh, I wanted even a little bit more there. All right. Yeah, I want to really cut the cut the mess ups and the fluff here. All right, so there are three. Let's even cut that a little bit better. Still might be something that's on your mind. And it's not too abrupt. It still might be something that's on your mind. All right, so there are three things, main things, that I would tell you about changing strings. The first and easiest is just calendar, all right? Um, and let's talk about, just so I can show you in case you're interested, how you would add some text here. All right, since I'm going through this list, all right, the three things, okay, let's add... Uh, and you can, you know, there's different effects. You can just put some text that pops up on the screen here. 
Uh, does it give us a little preview? Oh, it gives you a little preview actually down here. Oh, well, that's nice of what it does here. Okay. Well, those are quite nice. Wow. I'm impressed here. Okay. <laughs> There's the standard, okay? You can have none, which just pops up on the screen. Okay, uh, let's just do standard here. Oh, it's like so many things there. I think I'm gonna choose the focus, actually. Okay. Click edit, and we're gonna do number one, which is calendar. Okay, gonna hit return, okay. And I can drag it wherever I want to on the screen. Oh, and we forgot something. Okay. Let's go back over here to trim. I want to, on this clip here, hit this plus button. And I really should do this at the beginning before I start um, cutting clips. Because as soon as I do this clip right here and I hit this plus button, it says pinch to zoom. See, I want to focus in and cut all that stuff out and crop all that other stuff out that I don't need. All right, because this is basically a talking head video. I'm talking about, you know, when to change the strings. I'm not doing any playing. Um, now, if you are playing and you want to, you know, fix up your background, but we talked already talked about that in the beginning of this tutorial. But I want to make sure that I do this actually in the beginning, and I forgot... Because you see, if I don't do it in the beginning and I start cutting out all the all the fluff, all the mess ups, I'm gonna have to go back to each clip, okay, and do the pinch and zoom. This also goes if I want to change anything with the color. Okay, so that's all good now. On Let's your mind. Play. All right, so there are three things main. Th all right, and there's my text here. Change color, okay. Sliders, do that. Yeah, can't change. I can change the actual font, but it doesn't look like I can change the actual font size. Oh well, that's okay. All right, it's plenty big. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. All right, so we're gonna leave it right there. Um, let's see. Let's check one other thing here, if it will. Text, shadow, we already did that. Oh, all uppercase. Oh, you can add a sound effect. I don't know what that does. Okay. Sometimes the white on the, you know, the black on the background, uh, you know, doesn't always show up. So I know you can always pick a different uh, color here that you think might show up a little bit better. You know, that was worse. How about green? Sometimes white is still the best. No, goodness. Yeah. And then we're going to pick the color here. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to stick with white uh, so every once in a while gray but that background is gray so I don't think that's yeah it's not a good mark black just to see yeah black doesn't work either okay we're gonna stick with white here for the time being um, I could put it over myself there and you can see it a little bit better okay or if I put it up here all right um, and made it black since my background is kind of white. Ooh, that shows up pretty well. Okay, so I could go with that um, and not do that there. You about changing strings. The first and easiest is just. Let's go back. So anyway. Um, that's the, you know, that's if you want to add some text in there, um, and it doesn't look great there. 
Um, I could also, so that I could really see that number one, if I really wanted to do this here, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while the calendar thing is on the screen, okay, until it goes off, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this here. And I'm going to go back. And I'm just going to scoot this over because I have some space here where I can just create a little white space there and see I can get my camera out of the picture there. And strings. The first. There we go. All right, so there are three things, main things, that I would tell you about changing strings. The first and easiest and is then just the next clip calendar. goes back to what I had right. before. All right. How long have your current strings okay. been on Here the cello? I think changing strings once a year is a good rule of thumb for everybody, regardless of how much you play. Remember, the strings are on your instrument, tuned up with tension on them, even if they're just sitting in your case, and eventually they will wear out regardless of how much you play them. Okay, so, you know, mark your calendar, uh, see how long it's been since you changed your strings. Sometimes I have students in here and I say, when was the last time you changed your strings? And they don't know, okay? So we have all these devices, we have our phones, write it down, uh, maybe you ordered it online or you got it at a shop, call the shop, see if they have a record uh, or go look back through your email or whatever, watching, find out watching, how long those watching. strings have been on your cello. Um, if it's been more than a year, for sure you need to change them. At my height of play, well, big pause there. Let's get rid of that. For sure, you need to change them. At my height of play. At my. And then go back and give it a little preview. Make sure we like it. Change them. At my height of playing as a teacher and, you know, playing on the side, doing gigs, playing in the evenings, on the weekends, I think I changed mine every six months. I might have changed them after four months one time uh, when I was playing a lot. And I think the longest I've been is about 18 months. So, can't. Uh, another catching my words here. It's about 18 months. So, that's... Split that and then find where the endpoint is. Can't talk. For me, it's ranged. All for me, it's. For me. See what I'm doing? I'm clicking on that, then I'm clicking split, and then I'm clicking delete. For me, it's ranged all over depending on how much I was playing. I think at the height of my playing, like on a, on a regular basis, I would change every six months, change them every six months. You know, that's when I was playing a lot in the evenings and playing in a lot of different groups and, you know, gigging and doing different things on the weekends. Um, about the longest I've ever been is 18 months. I think I went one time without changing my strings. Now I change them about once a year uh, because they do get worn out. All right. So mark your calendar, go by the time, change them at least once a year, more oh, yeah, often. Myself, so I need to go back okay, and cut out the Now the time, you know, I went 18 months, as I mentioned, but, you know, I put really nice strings on my cello and the quality does matter. You know, more expensive strings will sound better. And one tip is um, to go through and watch this and without doing all the clicking, without doing all the editing um, and see, you know, which take you like. Okay, see which one you want to do before you even start clicking and editing and splitting. That, you know, that it is an investment, okay? Um, so be thinking about that. There's another one. So be thinking about that. Okay. Um, so be thinking about that when you are purchasing strings, an investment, okay, 
Um, it's okay. Um, so be thinking. So be thinking about that when you are purchasing strings, that nicer strings will last a little bit longer. Getting rid of the big pause here. All right, now the next two that I want to find the place where I'm talking. Now the next, you can see here, I'm going to delete the one before. Last a little bit longer. I'm just going to cut out that little section of nothing. All right, now. I'm going to do even split that one a little bit better. Longer. All right, now the next two that I want to tell you about have to do directly with the sound and it just comes with experience. The longer you play, the more you'll notice the It's the longer you play, the more you'll notice these things when your strings start to wear watch, out. So the first thing is they just aren't making that much sound. You know, at some point they lose their sure buoyancy, I'm... they 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 lose their ability to move very well. And so they're just not gonna be as loud, they're not gonna respond the way you want. You're gonna feel like you're just having to work extra, extra hard to get the sound out of the strings. And so just be listening for that. And it, you know, it takes getting used to it. It's not an exact science. Uh, that's why I say first use the calendar. Um, but you know, when you feel like they're just not doing what you want them to do, it's probably time to change them. Now, if it feels like they're not doing what you want them to do and you just changed them two weeks ago, well, you probably you just need to practice. But if they're not doing what you need them to do. And you look back and you say, oh, it was eight months. It was a year ago that I changed my strings. Probably it's time to change the strings. <clears throat> the last one has to do... Oh, it looks like I did reason number two in one take. Okay. Right. Split that off. Go back here. Find the beginning. Because I want to add a little text there. All right, now the next two that I want to tell you about have to do directly with the sound. And it just comes with... Let's see, so I want to split that. And then I want to... Pinch, zoom that over. Okay, and then I'm going to go back here um, to the text. I'm going to do the focus again. Number two, how do Just are they making enough sound? Okay. Um, let's do black again. Hopefully that's gonna work for us. I tell you about have to do directly with. Hmm. Let's see here. Nah, nah, hit the wrong thing. Saves your work though, that's good. Come on.
I let it do. At my height of playing, it's ranged all over. Now the next two that I want to See what that would do. I want to tell you about have to do direct longer. All right, now the next two that I want to tell you about have to do directly with the sound. It didn't. Okay. Full clip duration. Now, if I click on this full clip duration, because I didn't think the text was up there that long enough, uh, since I have separated out the clip there, um, I am to change the. I'm zoom in so I can find this quickly here. Instead of scrolling all the way back through those things. All right, so you see there, I'm gonna use my finger here. And then that way, the text is gonna stay up there for the entire clip. Have to do directly with the sound. And it just comes with experience. The longer you play, the more you'll notice these things when have. your strings okay. start to wear out. So the first thing is they just aren't making that much sound. You know, at some point they lose their buoyancy, They they, they lose their ability to move very well. And so they're just not gonna be as loud. They're not gonna respond the way you want. You're gonna feel like you're just having to work extra, extra hard to get the sound out of the strings. And so just be listening for that. And it, you know, it takes getting used to it. It's not an exact science. Uh, that's why I say first, use the calendar. Um, but you know, when you feel like they're just not doing what you want them to do, it's probably time to change them. Now, if it feels like they're not doing what you want. All right, we are gonna get back and finish editing this uh, video and show you how to publish it, but I just wanna mention a couple of things to you. First off, if you are getting some value out of this video, if you're liking it, please hit the like button and think about subscribing uh, to see more tutorials just like this one. Uh, I do a lot of tech tutorials, a lot of tutorials about the iPad, about the phone, so please consider subscribing. I also want to tell you uh, something that helps support the channel. If you're going to be back in the classroom like me uh, here very shortly uh, and you're going to be masking up as we all should be, you can order these masks here on the channel and they come in different colors. Black lettering. Black lettering. And you can even get them in classic black, white lettering. And gray lettering. Yeah. These are the most comfortable masks. I would not have made it through the past 18 months without these masks. You can wear them all day. They're really super soft, really comfortable. They last forever. I mean, I wash them every day uh, by hand in the sink. You do have to wash them by hand. Uh, but they're really great and they've lasted all of these 18 months. So they will last you for sure uh, for however long this year uh, that you're going to need to wear a mask and they really do help the channel. And of course, if you want to pick up a t-shirt while you're there, you can do that too. All right. So click the link in the description uh, and thank you for your support. Now for the rest of the video, it's going to be more of the same. We're going to be splitting and deleting those things which we don't want, the mess ups, uh, the little bits, you know, trimming the fluff, as we say, to really get to the content, really get to the tutorial. Um, and so we're gonna show that here in Fast Messenger. You can always go back and slow down the video, uh, or if you have questions, put them in the comment, but here we go, let's edit this video. I mentioned something at the beginning of the tutorial, shooting in 4K, okay, 4K and then editing in 1080 so that you can zoom in on things like when I zoom in on the phone here. 
Um, this is a really great idea. I think the iMovie, I didn't see any options actually to, to change between 1080 and 4K. I don't think it, I don't think it, um, I think it automatically does it in 1080. All right, but we'll double make sure of that, okay? I wanna follow up here and give you a definitive answer about this uh, 4K or 1080p business. And that is whatever the largest clip is, that's what the whole project is going to be. So as soon as you put in a 4K clip, that's what the video, and, and iMovie on the phone doesn't give you any option to change the project settings or change the resolution. Let me show you what I did. I was messing around with this here. So I'm gonna click here. All right, click edit. All right, so this has these two little clips here uh, that I was messing around with. And this one is in 1080 and this one in 4K. When you export this, this entire thing is going to be in 4K, all right? Even if I delete this one right here, it's gonna be in 4K. The only way to get it back to 1080p is to delete both of these, okay? This one and this one. Okay, I'd have to delete them both. Then re imp because I even tested this, I deleted this one and exported only this one, and it still came out 4K. Yes. So you have to delete both of them, okay, and then uh, put it back in there if you want something to be 1080. I still think if you if your phone can handle it, if if you can still edit it in a reasonable amount of time, the 4K is still uh, better because the original idea is that you you shoot it in 4K but then edit the whole thing in 1080p, but you can't do that unless you're on a desktop with some different software. But I still think for zooming in and cropping stuff out, the 4K is going to do a little bit better job of that. All right, all right, here we go. Just so watching it here. Still All right, something there got moved. Where is my text here? Hmm. All right, so at this point we have our whole video. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go and export it, all right, to my photos, and this is how we do that. I'm gonna click on uh, done here, all right. Probably best if I give it a title here so I can find it there on my device. When to, whoops, to change. Okay, when to change strings, done. And then we're gonna go over here, I'm sorry. Now I'm gonna hit this button down here, all right, is the one that I want for export. When I click it, it's just gonna ask me, I'm gonna click save video. Uh, it looks like I can save it to Dropbox if I wanted to, um, or I could save it to my photos, since I do, keep these all uh, in Dropbox. So it's gonna export the movie first, all right? So we have to wait for it to export. This could take a minute. Uh, go refill your coffee. The fan is going there. All right, so this is where you can save it to Dropbox or if the if the photos thing had shown up, um, and we'll show you that one as well, uh, what it looks like when you save. So I'm just gonna go through here. Um, I like to do this in uh, ML YouTube Dropbox here. All right, um, oh yeah, I wanna drop this in the cello tutorials. Uh, musical listening Dropbox, and then I click save, and it's going to upload that. Obviously, it's a pretty big file, so 
You need to wait for it to upload here. Whoa, got an error message. I'm not sure why it was more than 150 megabytes. So let's have to check that out later, but it is kind of big here. So let's do something different. Let's hit cancel. Let's hear it. Save video. Yeah, it's just going to copy it to the... Oh, wow. That was like, took like two seconds there. Okay, so this is important. Um, the reason it exported so quickly uh, a second ago is that it had already created the file. Um, it wasn't creating a new one. So once you've exported it, you can save it to wherever you need to. So make sure you do that before you close the window. You're going to be waiting again because I edited some text in there where I had forgotten to go back and put the, <clears throat> the calendar there, the first part of the list. So now we are waiting again. Movie was exported to your photo library. Obviously, that is the easiest thing to do there. All right, so then I'm here, and I'm going to click OK. Uh-oh. Let's see if it actually went to my photos. Click on the photos, albums, scroll over to recents here. Oh, there it is. I can get the full volume here. When is it time to change the strings? When should I change my cello strings? This is a question I get asked quite often. Alright, so there are the many various ways you can put a video online for your students. You can share it through Dropbox, through a public link, uh, which is view only. Of course, you can do Google Drive, uh, which probably most of us will be using, or uh, maybe Schoology, or Google Classroom. Um, you know, YouTube really is the easiest. It's the easiest for playback. It's the surefire way uh, that you will, uh, your students will be able to see it. Uh, now, different districts are have different policies about, you know, unblocking channels. So, if you put it on a personal channel or you put it on your teacher channel, uh, make sure that you've checked with the district that your channel is unblocked uh, for students. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this plus button here. Okay, upload video, and it's going to take me to. Remember, this is all in uh, reverse from you know, when you would be looking at it in the actual photo album. And there's the first one that we uh, exported. Here's the second one with the updated text there, excuse me. Okay. And uh, it's going to let me preview it there. But we've already previewed it. We've already gone through it and decided that it's okay. And we've listened to it, make sure the volume's okay. I'm going to click next. Okay. Uh, title. Okay. Um, Oops, because I got my keyboard hooked up here. When is it time to change your cello? Doing this one handed here. Okay. All right. Um, and yes, it's public. Okay. When is it time to change your cello strings? Okay. Uh, you have the option to put it in a playlist here. Uh, we can mess with that later. Okay, then I'm just going to click Upload. And it's uploading the video there. Now, while it's uploading, you know, YouTube goes ahead and gives this a, a URL. Okay, so while it's uploading, you can copy the link and email it to yourself, post it somewhere. You don't have to wait until, you know, it says right here, it says we're processing this video, check back later. That's because it's uploading. But you know, all the stuff that we have to do as teachers and all the places we have to post it and make the announcements and all that stuff, you can be doing that while this is uploading, uh, which I highly recommend here. Still going, it's about halfway done here. 
One of the reasons it's taking such a long time to uh, export, it is a .mov file. Okay, it's a full QuickTime movie file there on your phone. You could have exported straight to YouTube. That is an option. Uh, we might try that here uh, on the next one or in the next tutorial. Uh, but of course, when you do this on desktop, you have more options as far as what file format you want to export as um, and what you want to do if you want to go straight to YouTube, all those things. But of course, that whole exporting process that we were waiting for, the video would have to export and then just upload it straight to YouTube. I don't think it uh, exports it in any kind of special YouTube format like you can do when you can choose those options on the desktop. Almost there. While we're waiting, I will be giving this uh, video a custom thumbnail, which is totally optional. Just make sure your thumbnail is, you know, video format, either you know, 7, uh, 1280 by 720 or 1080 by 1920, excuse me, 1920 by 1080. I should know that by now. I think it says processing. All right. So that's what it's doing. It's processing because it is that full .mov version. Okay, so we're really just waiting, uh, and it'll be done here in a minute. All right, so that's it. That's making a tutorial completely on your phone, doing some simple edits with the splitting and deleting of the parts that we didn't want. As you can see, the audio is really good. Of course, the video as well. Any of this uh, extra stuff like titles or putting it on a tripod, of course, you know, lighting, these are all optional. These are all things that will make your video a little bit better. Of course, scripting, uh, having an outline also uh, can help your video just so you can stick to the points and know what you're going to say. Um, I went over it in my head many times and typed out some bullet points uh, before I you know, shot the video on changing the strings. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Uh, think about subscribing and coming back for more tutorials. I'm going to be doing more tutorials just like this one on the iPhone and how to make a movie on the iPad, which I am shooting on the iPad uh, right here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh, there it is. All right. Processing 100%. Can we watch it? Maybe. Library. Your videos. Where is it? Oh, yeah. It's before Oh Come Little Children because Oh Come Little Children is posting later tonight. Oh yeah, it's quiet because the screen record is still on. Here we go. Let's turn that off. You know, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a student, if you haven't been playing for long, uh, or maybe if you, if you have been playing for a while, it's you still loud. might be something that's on your mind. All right, so there are three things, main things, that I would tell you about changing strings. The first and easiest... Excellent. All right. Calendar. Good luck out there this school year, and uh, let's stay in touch. I think Thanks for watching. Strings are on your instrument, tuned up with tension on them, even if they're just sitting in your 